Hello YouTube and welcome back. So we've been having some exceptionally cold weather here in Michigan. Uh, zeros and negative temperatures for the last couple of weeks and I know a lot of other places in the rest of the country have too. So we're going to talk a little bit about why the reasons are that your hive died or may have died. You may know that your bees already died. You may not know that yet. Um, you may not know that until spring, but we're going to talk about some of those reasons here in just a minute. that bees die over the winter or in springtime. One of those reasons is going to be starvation. So they run out of honey. They don't have enough food stores in their hive. So they either were a little bit weak going into fall or you took honey from them and maybe didn't leave them quite enough. Most people give them supplements like sugar water or sugar dried sugar blocks or maybe a fondant or something like that in order to try to supplement those honey stores that they may not have enough of to get through the summer. So if you haven't been feeding your bees, you may want to consider throwing them something in there just as a backup. Even if you think there's enough honey, it's always safe to put something in there just in case because in the middle of the winter when it's two degrees outside, do you really want to walk out there and try to open that thing up and see if they have enough honey in there? Probably not. So another big reason that your bees are gonna have a hard time and most likely die, which is kind of one of the most common ones, I think, is gonna be moisture buildup in the hive. So moisture buildup in the hive is really bad because they're trying to keep a really warm temperature inside the hive all winter long in order to survive. They ball up in a bee ball or what we call a cluster and they, they don't really hibernate, but they shiver together and they generate heat by doing that and as the bees get cold on the outside they move into the inside to get warmer and some of those warmer bees are then pushed to the outside they do this to try to keep warm they will maintain a temperature of like 88 89 degrees ish in their hive as best they can so if you winterize the hive and you wrap it in something maybe even over the top with a tarp or something and that moisture is allowed to build up in the hive maybe you don't have the right ventilation boards on the tops and the bottoms and that moisture builds up in the hives it could literally rain in those hives off of the top of the lids it'll just drip water so water getting on the bees is way harder for the bees to be able to survive when they get wet because they just get way too cold. It's the same thing as you go out and you jump in the lake and it's freezing, you're a lot colder and you're gonna have a lot harder time getting warm and keeping warm than if you were just trying to huddle together with somebody else and giving them a big old hug and trying to generate heat and keep warm, right? So moisture is terrible and moisture will happen if the temperature outside is really, really cold and the temperature inside is really, really warm and you don't have some sort of a barrier between those two in order to make it so condensation doesn't build up. So moisture can be a really, really bad one. So you have to keep track of moisture. How can you tell you have a moisture buildup? If you open up the hive in the spring, lift up the lid, even if they're not dead and there's mold all over the inside of the hive, you have a bad moisture problem. That is a bad sign. Mold is not good. So in moisture, the more moisture that there is in the hive will also actually end up adding back or being absorbed by the honey. So in order to create honey, They've fanned it, they've done things to it, they've mixed it up, they've tried to get the moisture content to come out of the nectar in order for it to concentrate down to honey. Well, if you add moisture back to that honey, what does it make? It goes back to nectar. What happens to nectar? Why are they taking the moisture out of the honey? Because they're trying to make it so it doesn't ferment, so it doesn't go bad. So if moisture builds up in the hive, it's absorbed by that honey again, and that honey can ferment and go bad. So even if the water doesn't bother the bees themselves, it's definitely going to damage their food stores. All right, so next is going to be temperature fluctuations. Temperature fluctu... All right, so next is going to be temperature fluctuations. Temperature changes, drastic temperature changes between the inside of the hive and the outside of the hive can have a very serious effect on the hive. What you want to try to do is minimize how fast the temperature inside the hive changes compared to the outside. So here in Michigan, in any given day, we can be 89 and snow. Not really, but close. So 
if that temperature in that hive they're trying to maintain goes from super warm because it is warmer outside to a whole lot colder, a whole lot faster, it makes it so the bees won't cluster, they won't ball up properly. And if they don't do that properly, they end up freezing and they end up losing a fair amount of numbers and sometimes the whole entire hive. So what you need to do is you need to insulate the hive enough to allow the temperature on the inside to warm up and cool down much slower than the temperature outside the hive might. You wanna make sure you keep that to a minimum. And this is really important in the springtime because the springtime is when a lot of hives die. In fact, I dare say most hives die. If they die over what we call the winter, they die in the spring. Because what happens is, is those bees on warm days start to come out of their cluster. They start to go out and cruise around and it may be 40, 45, 50 or more in the daytime when the sun is out, but at nighttime those temperatures are still getting really, really low. And when those temperatures get really low, those bees have been out, they've been active, they're not balling right up real quick inside the hive. And so those cold temperatures will bring that cold crunch down onto the hive on the inside too, and they don't cluster up fast enough and get back into that stay warm mode, and they end up losing a lot of bees. And so a lot of hives die in the spring because of this warm up in the day and this really cold temperature at night. So by insulating them and giving them protection from that, you will help your hives regulate that temperature, especially in the spring, a lot easier. So another reason that your hive might have issues over the winter is that they were weak going into winter. So in the fall, when we're all talking about thinking about honey, we actually also have to think about going into the hive and making sure that we can determine that everything is okay. And if it's not, what is wrong and to be able to help them become healthier. So we're all trying to keep them healthy all summer long and all winter long really, but we have to really make sure that we're looking and focusing on what is wrong because if they're ill or there's an ailment in the fall, that's gonna to translate to a weakened hive, a smaller amount of bees in the winter time and possibly death over winter. So you have to make sure that you've done your varroa mite treatment. You have to make sure that you've looked at the health of the bees to make sure that they don't have deformed wing or that there's not some sort of a, something going wrong you know, on their honey or on their comb or um, uh, mold growing anywhere already from maybe humid summers, things like that. Something I learned many years ago and I still think about every single time I get in the hives is that a beekeeper, really the only thing you need to do as a beekeeper, the only real foundation to being a beekeeper is that you have to witness your hive, observe your hive often enough to be able to understand what the difference is between a healthy hive, what they are doing and what they're supposed to be doing and everything looks good so that you can identify, you have to watch them enough so you can identify when that changes and determine what's wrong. Why does this look different than it has for the last several weeks or months? What is different? Identify, being able to identify what's wrong and then being able to determine what you need to do to help them fix the problem. So if you really boil that right down to what is beekeeping, it's observation. It's looking at the outside of the hive as they're coming and going and looking at the inside of the hive often enough that you become familiar enough with what they're doing and how they're doing it in order to understand when that changes that you notice that. You've got to go in and you've got to say, hey, this is not right. This isn't the way it has been. So you have to be able to recognize those changes. And if you get good at that, then you'll be sailing through the rest of your beekeeping because after that foundation, the rest of it is just treatments and helping the bees. So occasionally, but not that often, but it does occur, sometimes your hive will be blown over or the top will be blown off in high winds, especially in uh, Michigan or northern regions where the wind can really get to whipping in the winter time. If your lid blows off, your hives pretty much are goner. Uh, bears are another one. Bears will knock them over. If you live in some of the northern states, if you live in Canada, anywhere where you've got some bears to mess with, bears love honey. So you want to make sure you have your lid uh, attached down either with maybe a ratchet strap or putting some blocks or something, a cinder block on top of it to hold the lid down nice and tight. Or you want to make sure in the case of bears, you may have to go a little bit more extreme. You may have to put electric fence or something around it because I tell you, there's a lot of things that can get between a bear and a hive that are useless. So another reason is going to be pesticides, herbicides, different kinds of things the bees can get into, whether it's being sprayed on a field or whether it's being used around a home or a commercial building, maybe even improperly. So those kinds of chemicals can come back. And I know there's a lot of debate around this. There's always been a lot of chat about it, especially in the last several years. A lot of people have very different opinions about exactly what's going on with the, with the bees and, and why they're having such a hard time. But in this specific instance, that buildup can 
occur inside the hive in your wax, in your comb. So when those bees fly out and they collect what they collect and they bring it back, the amount that they bring back may not seem like it's very much, but if they keep bringing that back and they keep walking over the same comb and they keep using the same frames year after year after year, sometimes those pesticides can build up in your comb and in your wax, in your hive, and they may build up to the point where they become harmful to your hive. So what some people will do is go through a regimen and replace their comb about every two or three years. So they may do a certain percentage one year and a certain percentage the next year, but overall every two or three years they will have replaced their wax comb or their foundation in their hive in order to prevent any possible buildup from anything the bees might be able to go out and pick up and bring back to the hive. So that's always an option. So another one might be that your entrance gets blocked off on your hive. It may be snow builds up, it may be the bees are dying inside and they block off the entrance. And the problem with that is, is that bees don't use the restroom. They don't go to the bathroom inside their hive. They will wait until the weather warms up one or two days in maybe February, maybe January, um, maybe even March. And when it does warm up, they'll come out and they'll go to the bathroom. So they hold it all winter long or as long as they can. And it actually builds up so much, it pushes all of their internal organs right to the outside of their body. So it's a pretty brutal process. What happens is, is that when it does get warm and they start to break that cluster or that bee ball, they actually need to get, they have to get out of the hive in order to use the bathroom. If that entrance down below is blocked and they can't do that, you're gonna have serious problems with the health of your hive. So just make sure in the winter time that you try to keep some snow dusted off of the entrance so that it's open. It, you might wanna stick a stick or something maybe in your entrance. Hopefully it's been reduced for the winter time so it's a lot smaller of an entrance. So just stick a stick in there and swish it around to the point where you can make sure that there's not a bunch of dead bee bodies laying in front of the entrance that's blocking it because it's very important that they be able to get out and fly around when the weather warms up. And the last one is probably gonna be failure to check your bees in the winter. So we all think, oh, we're just gonna put the food in, we're gonna winterize them, we're gonna leave them alone, and we're just gonna cross our fingers and hope for the best. But you really wanna take the opportunity, when we talked about, when we talked about they're gonna uh, get out of their hive to be able to fly, to be able to go to the bathroom, you wanna use the opportunity the same day as that it's 40 degrees, especially if there's bees coming and going from the hive, you wanna pop out there and you wanna lift the lid and you wanna look in the hive. You wanna check for mold, you wanna check and make sure that they, if you did put sugar or sugar water in, that they still have resources in there. If you didn't, you wanna make sure they still have honey. Just generally look and make sure everything looks like it's supposed to look. If you look in the hive and you lift that lid on that 40 degree day and you see mold inside that hive, then you better be doing something that day to prevent that from happening because the, pro the hive is not properly uh, ventilating. So make sure that you do those little checks when you have the opportunity. A lot of times people always ask, well, what temperature can I actually go out and look? Well, it's only 31 degrees or 36 degrees. I don't want to open the hive. It'll make them too cold. Now, there's a little bit of debate on that, but for the most part, as long as you just lift the lid and take a glance, a little bit of a review to see what's going on, and don't actually open up the hive and start pulling frames out and going down through it to check and see what's going on, you're not going to hurt the bees that much. So it's always better to check and take a little review and a little peek um, in the wintertime whenever you can, just to make sure that everything looks okay. Okay, so hopefully that's going to help you determine a little bit about maybe why your bees died. Hopefully you don't have to care about any of these because your bees are healthy and they're doing just fine. But in the instance that they did die or do die this spring, just make sure you go down through that little checklist maybe and just double check and make sure. If they did die, make sure you address some of those situations for the following year. And I always have to put a disclaimer in at the beginning or at the end of these that beekeeping is, there's not only one right way to do it. There are lots of different ways to do it. The things we talk about on our channel and in our programs are the things that work best for us, things that we've found through trial and error and sometimes error, more error. Um, that have worked well for us. So just a little disclaimer that just because you do all of these, if you have a check next to every single one of these boxes and you did this right and you did this right and you did this right and your bees still died, doesn't necessarily mean it's you. We're living, we're dealing with a live animal and sometimes you can do everything right and still have not a great turnout. So don't get discouraged if it happened. Don't give up, keep at the grind. So from all of us at Great Lakes Bee Supply, Good luck with everything that's going on. Leave us some comments down below if you want. Thank you for coming to Honey and Home and watching our videos. And make sure you pop over to our Facebook or pop onto our website. Email us. We love questions. We love answering questions on here. We love helping any way we can. Doesn't matter where you live. 
please communicate with us. We love to talk to you. We love seeing your pictures. So until next time, have a great day, everyone.